Hello, I am Kelly Bays, and this is my presentation for Dr. Graves' English 3010 Introduction to Poetry class. I chose The Necessity for Irony by Evan Bolin. Um, and a little reason why I chose that was because I have a really good relationship with my mother. And after reading this poem, it just kind of reminded me how important that is to have because you're going to grow up and you're not going to have the time to spend with them that you do when you're younger. And you're not going to be able to make as many memories as you can when you're younger. So when you're young and you have the time and your parents have the time, you need to try to make as many good experiences as you can because you're going to look back and you're going to cherish those moments that you have. Because I'm growing up, I'm moving away from my mother, and after reading this, it just kind of reminded me how sad that can be for her because I'm not going to be there all the time like I am now. And getting to spend this time together and enjoy the things that the other enjoys is really important. And it just kind of made me want to spend even more time with her now because I have the time and I know I'm not in the future. And it's just kind of sad to see how saddening it is for a mother as her child grows up because it's inevitable. You can't stop it. So... This poem is really important for children and for parents to read because it's just kind of a little reminder that says, cherish it while you can because you're not going to have it all the time. And um, a little background about Evan Bolin is she was born on September 24th, 1944 in Dublin, Ireland. Um, her father was a diplomat and her mother was a post-expressionist painter. At the age of six, her father became the Irish ambassador in the United Kingdom so the entire family went with him for his job to London, and that is where she spent the majority of her childhood um, between London and New York and until the age of 14 when she moved back to Dublin to go to um, Holy Child School as her secondary school. And then she went to Trinity College, where in her first year she published her first collection entitled um, 23 Poems, and that was in 1962. She later graduated from Trinity with honors with her B.A. in English Literature and Language. Um, she has taught at Trinity College, University College in Dublin, Bowden College, and is currently teaching English and directing the creative writing program at Stanford University. Um, she tends to write more about women and womanhood, um, so that's kind of given her the title as a feminist. But she also writes about Irish history, Irish history and mythology. And she has published over 35 works of literature. Um, a few of them are New Territory, In Her Own Image, Night Feed, The Journey, and other poems, Outside History, Selected Poems, In a Time of Violence, In Origin Like Water, The Lost Land, L Against Love Poetry, Domestic Violence, and her most recent, A Journey with Two Maps, Becoming a Woman. Um, with all of those publications she has had, she has also had many awards and honors. Um, her first one was in 1976. It was the Jacobs Award. Following that, she had the Lannan Literary Award for Poetry, uh, the Bucknell Medal of Distinction, Smart Family Prize from the Yale Review, John Frederick Nims Award from Poetry Magazine, um, Corrington Award for Literary Excellence, James Boatwright III Prize for Poetry, Penn Award for Creative Nonfiction, and the American Ireland Lit Fund Literary Award. Um, if you want to follow along as I read the poem, it begins on page 40 in the middle of the page. The Necessity for Irony. On Sundays, when the rain held off, after lunch or later, I would go with my 12-year-old daughter into town and put down the time at junk sales, antique fairs. There, I would lean over tables, absorbed by place, wooden frames, glass. My daughter stood at the other end of the room, her flame-colored hair, obvious whenever, which was not often. I turned her around, I turned around, she was gone. Grown, no longer ready to come with me, whenever a dry Sunday held out its promises of small histories. Endings. When I was young, I studied styles, their use and origin which age was known for which ornament, and was always drawn to a lyric speech, a civil tone, but never thought I would have the need, as I do now, for a darker one. Spirit of irony, my caustic 
sarcastic author of the past, of memories, and of its pains, which returns, hurts, stings, reproach me now, remind me that I was in those rooms with my child, with my back turned to her, so searching, oh irony, for beautiful things. Um, as you can tell, the poem was written um, it's in free verse, and it's just kind of a mother reminiscing on the day she got to spend with her daughter. Um, the first theme that I kind of noticed was how quick the time passes. Like, you, like they say, you blink and it's gone. Um, in lines 17 through 19, where she says, I turned around, I turned around, she was gone. It's not like a thing that happened right at that moment. It's just that now she looks back and her daughter's no longer there with her like she was in these times that they had. Um, and that kind of leads into the next theme that children grow up and they change. Um, lines 20 through 25. Grown, no longer ready to come with me whenever a dry Sunday held out its promises of small history's endings. It was the ending of her childhood. She's no longer a child. She's an adult. She started her own family. She's moved away. Um, like I said, she doesn't get to spend that time with her mother that she once did. And her mother is kind of, it seems like, wishing that she would have paid more attention to her daughter because she was so engrossed in the things that she liked in those antiques, in those junk sales, that she didn't really notice that her daughter was growing up, that that time was passing and it was passing really quick. And that kind of, that's the sadness that I also see as a theme, the sadness that her daughter's no longer there and the sadness that she wishes she would have tried to spend more time or maybe just paid more attention to her daughter because your childhood does not last forever. Um, and also, I noticed uh, the blindness of the beauty that's right in front of her. As she says in those last lines, that I was in those rooms with my child, with my back turned to her, searching, oh irony, for beautiful things. She was ironically searching for beautiful things when there was a beautiful thing right in front of her or behind her, her daughter was there. And instead of spending as much time and paying more attention to her, she kind of went about doing her own things, believing that her daughter liked them too, which she might have. But she also needed to remember that she needed to do the things that her daughter liked too because she's no longer younger. She, she's her, her young days are over and she has grown up. So now the mother is looking back and thinking, well, my daughter's gone. She's no longer my little girl. She's got her own family now. And um, it just seems like it starts out kind of, kind of cheery a little bit, even though it does talk about rain and stuff. It was happy days. Happy days where they got to go out and enjoy things. And then as the poem progresses, you notice that it's kind of getting a darker tone to um, just that sadness is overwhelming. And you can only wonder if her daughter feels the same way, because this is just from one point of view. This isn't from the daughter's. But after reading this, I would believe that the daughter would maybe feel the same way and kind of wish that she had tried for her mother. She had maybe tried for more attention or that maybe she had tried for, tried liking the things that her mother liked and enjoying those things and just spending time with her because her mother is just engulfed with sadness after reading this. And it's just so ironic because her mother was searching for these beautiful things, but her daughter was right there. So in searching for beautiful things, she kind of just looked past the beautiful things that were always there. The beauty that was her daughter, the beauty of the child she had created, the relationship that she had created. So, I mean, the major themes that I saw was just the sadness, the blindness of beauty. I mean, you can miss things and that time flies. You just need to cherish as much as you possibly can all that time with your parents, all that time with your children, your grandparents, really with anybody. This doesn't even have to be 
put down to you have to be, it has to be with your mother. It has to be with your father. No, it can be with anybody because time is going to fly and you can't control that. You can't control the fact that people grow up, people move away, people change. So after reading this, I just kind of thought back to any relationship that you have with anyone. You need to fight like you need to try your hardest to make all of these good, good um, memories. So when you look back, you have the time. You have the time that you spent with them. So it's not so sad. Maybe we won't have the sadness that she seems to have as she wrote this. Um, but that is what I saw in this poem. And that is just that the daughter has grown. The mother is seeing the irony, which is why it's kind of the title is the necessity for irony, because it's necessary for us to have this irony so we can see kind of what we missed and that's I think what Bolin was trying to get across and that's what I saw. Thank you.